Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. Going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. William Sanborn, Chief of the Division of Gastroenterology at UC San Diego Health. And he's joining us to talk about some recent data from the Phase 3 Unify study that's evaluating the safety and efficacy of Janssen's Stellara. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Or well, welcome back to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Sanborn. Thanks for taking the time this evening. Thank you very much. Well, uh, for our listeners who aren't uh, familiar with you and may not have uh, listen to you when you were here before, give us a brief background about your uh, area of expertise, and then let's talk about this study and what it evaluated. I'm a gastroenterologist, and my uh, clinical care as well as my research focus is uh, inflammatory bowel disease, both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. I've been heavily involved with studying uh, biologic medicines for these diseases over the last 20 years or so. And uh, this study is, um, you know, builds on uh, more than a decade of work, I would say. I uh, first treated a patient with Stellara in about uh, 2006 or so, mm-hmm. and uh, here we are, all these later's with uh, years later, with the uh, uh, tail end of uh, development and uh, use in clinic now. Well, we're, we're going to talk about the Phase Three Unify study this evening. Tell me a little bit about the study and what it evaluated. Well, UNIFI was a uh, large trial that uh, randomized uh, patients with moderately to severely active ulcerative colitis to two different uh, dosing regimens of uh, Stellara or placebo, and patients who responded uh, to the Stellara therapy were re-randomized to additional therapy uh, with long-term treatment or uh, placebo. And then at the end of those two placebo-controlled phases, which went over the course of a year, mm-hmm. patients could move into what we call a long-term extension trial and be treated uh, for a number of years. And in fact, they're still undergoing treatment. So this study looked at uh, patients who had gone into that long-term treatment uh, for uh, several years and uh, was assessing uh, safety and various efficacy measures. How many patients did you evaluate? Well, the, we um, followed uh, 523 patients uh, uh, forward uh, over the study period. Mm-hmm. And what would you say were the key findings from the UNIFI study? I would say that the main findings were that uh, you saw really substantial improvements in stool frequency and rectal bleeding mm-hmm. after induction therapy with intravenous uh, Stellara, and those could be maintained to through, through two consecutive uh, years of uh, therapy. So it was quite a uh, robust effect for the clinical symptoms that patients uh, care a lot about. So we saw uh, patients who, you know, would have often had uh, stool frequencies with, you know, multiple stools per day Mm -hmm. getting down to either their normal stool frequency or just one or two stools more than normal. And the almost all the patients getting to rectal bleeding scores of uh, of zero, meaning that they had complete resolution of uh, rectal bleeding. So, you know, very meaningful endpoints for the patients. As an IV delivered treatment, Talk a little bit about the safety and maybe a little bit about the side effects as well. How, how long is the uh, IV? Is it, an, is it just a simple injection or is it a long, prolonged uh, intravenous delivery? Yeah, so let's break it up into to two pieces. The, the first piece is what we call induction of response and induction of remission. That's just eight weeks and you get a single intravenous dose, which takes 30 minutes or so to, to get. After that, the patients are treated with a... Uh, subcutaneous self-administered injection or a shot, uh, which they take every eight weeks. So, you know, that from a patient perspective, to be treated every eight weeks with a dose you can give yourself is is pretty attractive. And so uh, that, that's what they took. Um, from a safety standpoint, you know, I, I guess people tend to subconsciously equate intravenous or even a subcutaneous injection or shot with uh, kind of, quote, serious but it's really not. It depends very much on the mechanism of action of the drug and, and the safety associated with that mechanism of action. So despite the fact that it's given as a subcutaneous injection over the long term, it had a very uh, benign 
uh, safety profile, I would say. And, you know, the, the rate of side effects that we see is very similar to what we uh, almost to patients that would receive uh, placebo or sort of background therapy with this disease. Talk about how the study, uh, the results of the study may affect how uh, physicians treat patients and how patients may ask certain questions based on information that the physicians will have. Well, I think, you know, patients with ulcerative colitis, as they get into that moderate severe category, they're pretty miserable. And, you know, so they have a big negative impact on their quality of life. It's hard to work and go to school and have relationships and all those things. So when they when they start on a medicine, they a they want to know if they're going to get better, but then they want to know if they're going to stay better, if it's going to be durable or maintained, and whether long term treatment is safe. Because for most of us, we always worry about taking a medicine uh, chronically. So I think the the idea that um, the medicine uh, Stellara works uh, frequently to improve the quality of life of patients, to induce a response and remission and bowel, uh, uh, improvement, uh, by endoscopy and all those things mm-hmm. is important to patients, but then they want a long-term game plan. And so what this study, uh, says is if you respond to the treatment, the long-term game plan over two years is set for many patients. They're going to, their symptoms are going to stay uh, improved uh, after initially improving, and you know there's going to be good safety with that. That's very promising. Above and beyond that, what would you say is another exciting aspect about Stellar for people suffering with ulcerative colitis? Well, you know, some of the other things that that we've seen, which have been the focus of other abstracts and papers, uh, have to do with um, you know, this concept of immunogenicity or, or developing allergic reactions or, or antibodies against the drug, which reduce its efficacy. And we see a very low rate of immunogenicity with Stellara. And that's different from some other uh, biologic drugs that patients with, with ulcerative colitis might take. So that's very attractive to patients. We don't have to take other steps like co-administering an immune suppressive or anything to block immunogenicity. You can take Stellara by itself uh, and expect that it's going to be well tolerated over the long term. Where can we go online and get some more information about this study and about Stellara? Well, I think uh, for this study, you could go to the website of the American College of Gastroenterology or the ACG, and uh, there's information uh, there, including the full, uh, you know, presentation that was made at the meeting uh, with these uh, data, um, and uh, the Stellara website uh, is always a, a good place uh, for information. Right. Well, I thank you for uh, coming back and speaking with us again, Dr. Sanborn. My pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. William Sanborn, Chief of the Division of Gastroenterology at UC San Diego Health. Audio copies of the program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.